in my opinion, is a highly unethical uh, experiment. An evacuation zone study is being released by your group, uh, Dr. Jeff Patterson, Physicians for Social Responsibility, that shows there are many nuclear plants in the United States where there are much denser populations than there were around Hiroshima or Chernobyl. Can you talk about the news conference that you're heading off to right after you leave Democracy Now? Yes. Uh, we're uh, doing a presentation uh, in which we've developed a map that uh, you can click on and see uh, in your area how near you are to a nuclear power plant, and then look at the uh, evacuation zones uh, out from that power plant. Uh, and, uh, for example, in New York, uh, there's an, a nuclear power plant 19 miles from New York City. So we're talking about with a, a, an accident like Fukushima uh, potentially evacuating 20 million people. Well, if the Japanese the Japanese are having trouble evacuating the folks from around their plant and are now changing the, quote, safe levels of radiation that children can be exposed to in the middle of the ballgame here. Uh, imagine what it would be like in New York City when uh, this accident might occur uh, and attempting to evacuate uh, those people on a summer day, let alone in the middle of a snowstorm in New York City. So I would invite people to uh, look at this and consider what this means for their lives. The mayor of uh, South Miami, uh, Florida, just wrote a letter when, after the Fukushima accident, he was trying to find out what the evacuation plans for, are for South Miami, which is 16 miles from uh, a nuclear power plant. And he, as mayor, can't find out uh, what will happen and feels that the plans are totally inadequate, including the pan plans to distribute uh, potassium potassium iodide. He tried to find out from the county how many tablets of potassium iodine were available, and they wouldn't tell him. So I think that uh, the lesson in this is that wherever this happens in the world, uh, it happens to us all. The radiation from Fukushima is here. We're still experiencing radiation from uh, Chernobyl that has gone worldwide. And so no one is isolated from these accidents. Uh, and that no matter where it occurs, whether we blame the technology in Russia, uh, whether we blame the tsunami, uh, that we are all totally inadequately prepared to deal with this. We are attempting to manage the unmanageable. And so we need to rapidly move away from this and rapidly move away from uh, nuclear weapons in the world. Uh, Dr. Janet Sherman, you're known for a prophetic paper you wrote some six months before the Fukushima catastrophe, uh, where you wrote, given the profound weather effects, earthquakes, floods, tsunamis, human fallibility and military conflicts, many believe it's only a matter of time before there's another nuclear catastrophe. Can you talk more about this and what you feel needs to be done? I mean, you uh, uh, talked about this before. Fukushima. You edited the book Chernobyl, um, the book that uh, looks at the consequences of the catastrophe for people and nature, putting together a number of Russian writers about what took place. And you also talked about how the Russian government dealt with it and how governments should deal. Well, I th we, we clearly need to, as a society, to say no to nuclear power, because there is no way to control it. Uh, and as Dr. Patterson points out, uh, these catastrophes will continue, and we can't—we simply, as a uh, world society, cannot deal with them. The, um, when a nuclear reactor explodes, the radiation goes around the entire hemisphere. It is not confined to where the, the people live, or where the uh, accident occurred. The uh, effects are ubiquitous across all species. That's uh, wild and domestic animals, birds, fish, uh, bacteria, viruses, plants, and humans. So the effects are, are extremely serious, and they last for generations. We're terribly concerned about um, the uh, Belarus, where only 20 percent of the children are now considered healthy. So what do you do with a society if 80 percent of your uh, population is sick? Who are going to be the artists and the musicians and the scientists and the teachers if um, your population is not well? We need to stop the use of nuclear power. We have other sources, conservation 
and solar and wind and biofuels. We need the population to rise up and say, no more nuclear. It's not going to work, and it will just be a matter of time before there's yet another accident such as occur is occurring at Fukushima Daiichi. We know now they still do not have this um, accident under control, and it's still releasing massive quantities of uh, isotopes. And the dis it's going to be a disaster for the Japanese population, but also f it's this spreading around, again, the northern hemisphere. Uh, you had talked about the liquidators in Chernobyl, the people who went into the plant. Yes. And you also <laughs> look at those in Japan and what it means for them. Explain their jobs and what it is they're exposed to. Well, in Chernobyl, the liquidators were largely recruits. They were generally healthy young men and women, generally between the ages of 18 and 39 or so. Already by 2006, uh, 15 percent had died, and now the data that is that is arriving uh, to us is that about 90 percent of the 800,000 recruits have bad health, and their children are particularly adversely affected. Now we don't know. Uh, if the uh, cleanup workers in Japan are being protected or not. Uh, certainly, the Tyvek suits are not going to protect them from external radiation. The biggest concern um, for the uh, is the inhalation and ingestion of radioisotopes, which are uh, being released on a constant basis. We see that the cleanup workers in Japan are wearing respirators, but whether they are adequate or not, I have no idea. We're also not being given information on the levels of radiation to which they're exposed. Now, what they did in Chernobyl, they would send in some people to do some particularly dangerous work for maybe 15 minutes or half an hour, and then take them out because they have received a lifetime dosage. We don't know what's occurring in um, Japan, particularly and whether the workers are being adequately protected. Um, it's very, very, very important to keep adequate records on exposures and the effect of the workers and make them publicly available, certainly not by the name of the individual person, but certainly the data needs to be um, available and transparent so scientists can follow what is happening to these people. <clears throat> the problem with Chernobyl was that they uh, released almost no data for three years, and it was very, very difficult to reconstruct um, uh, what was happening. And as Dr. Patterson pointed out, many of these um, records have disappeared, and indeed many records of uh, nuclear workers in the United States have disappeared, and it has um, workers have a very hard time finding what their uh, exposures were, even when they knew what their job description was. Well, Dr. Janet Sherman, I want to thank you for being with us, specialist in internal medicine and toxicology, edited the book Chernobyl, Consequences of the Catastrophe for People and Nature, and Dr. Jeff, and Dr. Jeff Patterson, as you head off to the news conference of physicians for social responsibility. Could you just describe Chernobyl to us today? What is it like? Well, it's uh, an area uh, 30 uh, kilometers in uh, uh, circumference that uh, is totally uh, out of bounds to humans. And uh, no crops are grown there. Uh, some people have moved back in. Uh, large areas of the earth has been scraped off, trees cut down, uh, and all of that earth has been buried in trenches. Um, and uh, now, as they are attempting to build the new sarcophagus, they're finding high levels of radiation in the ground with machinery that was buried immediately in the area. Uh, there are graveyards with um, tanks, uh, buses, uh, machines that are highly radioactive that are just sitting uh, out in the open air. And interestingly enough, a recent report showed that uh, the cesium levels uh, around Chernobyl and in this uh, zone and other zones have not diminished in the way that they predicted that they would. And so they don't know whether this is coming from cesium that's coming up through the soil, uh, whether it's perhaps coming from new cesium that's being blown into the area. Uh, but clearly the unknowns are far greater than the knowns uh, in all of this. 
And uh, this is an experiment that we're carrying out with the unknowing and unconsenting uh, irradiation of huge populations of people around the world. And now we're now seeing, for example, in Japan, uh, raising the bar, allowing children to be exposed to levels of radiation that uh, previously were restricted for nuclear workers. And uh, in my opinion, this is uh, unconscionable. Uh, it's like being in a ball game and in the seventh inning deciding that one team is losing, and so they say they're going to change the rules in the middle of the game. Uh, these levels were set for a reason, and that's because radiation is not good for you, and there is no safe level of radiation. And so to now uh, change the rules of the game, uh, again, is another uh, unconscionable part of this uh, terrible, uh, cruel point poisonous experiment that we won't know the end result of for hundreds of years. Dr. Jeff Patterson, thank you so much for being with us. Immediate past president of thank Physicians you. for Social Responsibility, which is holding a news conference today to release a new report. This is democracy.